On April 3rd, Jimin of BTS became the first South Korean soloist to debut at number one on the world's biggest music chart, the Billboard Hot 100. His song Like Crazy became the seventh song ever by a Korean act to reach number one. The other six songs are BTS's songs, so all of the Korean songs that reach number one are from BTS and BTS members only. Actually, all the songs from Asian artists that debuted at number one are from BTS and BTS members only. And believe it or not, this is extremely scary for the music industry. Since BTS entered the Hot 100's top 10 for the first time in 2018, the music industry has done everything in their power to prevent them from getting number one songs. But why does BTS keep succeeding despite literally being one of the most sabotaged artists in the industry? And why would all these music entities work together to harm one artist? Isn't this simply paranoia from BTS fans? The industry's actions say something very clear. BTS cannot be at the top, and they don't try to hide this anymore. Everyone can see the industry's obvious intentions by looking at the times they come up with a weird new rule that prevents BTS from succeeding in their charts. Just look at the latest one. Jimin's song Like Crazy got a number one in its first week and it was predicted to stay in the top 10 for its second week. Jimin was achieving the same debut number numbers of Olivia Rodrigo but without the industry support. And this obviously was not the industry's plan. So Billboard decided to change one specific rule that benefits Jimin so him and only him can fall from the charts and the rest of it stays exactly the same. It's still unknown what Billboard did exactly to make the best-selling song of the week go from 100,000 sales to 14,000 sales. Maybe Billboard didn't just want Jimin to not be in the top 10, they wanted him to free fall. So why filter 60% of the song's sales so he can fall from the top 10, when you can cut 90% of the song's sales and make him have the biggest fall ever? Maybe they didn't just want to take his accomplishment away, they wanted to send a message. They wanted to show who is really in charge. Not the fans consuming the music, but the industry itself. This is not the first time they've done this. Whenever they want a song to fall on the charts, they apply a new rule that applies to one artist and then they forget about this rule for the following weeks until once again an artist they don't want to be at the top is at the top so they apply one specific rule that can help them fall allegedly of course because the only explanation to delete 90% of a song's sales is for Luminate which tracks these numbers to track each payment by looking at IP addresses and credit card information and that's illegal and Billboard would never of course so why would the whole industry go out of their ways to prevent one artist from succeeding. BTS's biggest advantage and disadvantage is that they are successful without the industry's support. And the industry has built an environment where you can only win if you accept to play the industry's game. In other words, the industry chooses its winners from the very beginning and sabotages other players who find alternative ways to defeat others at their own game. I would say that the biggest artists who do this are BTS, and it's because of ARMY's power. BTS is not simply a one-hit artist, they are at the core of pop culture and they did this without industry support, not the K-pop industry support, not the Western industry support. BTS were able to get to the top of the music industry without the music industry making a profit out of them. That's why BTS are a problem. That's what the industry cannot stand. Just compare Psy's situation with BTS's situation. When Gangnam Style by Psy became globally popular, the music industry was not afraid of a Korean singer becoming popular in the West because everyone assumed it was a one-time thing. But when BTS became globally popular, the story was different. The Western industry was first okay with them being a one hit artists. They were fine with BTS being the weird phenomenon that people will grow out of after some time. But when they didn't disappear and they actually started defeating Western artists, the music industry got worried. When I first heard something Korean had exploded in America, I got worried. The entertainment industry is usually happy to celebrate international and independent artists and scream diversity as long as one, it's a one-time thing or two, artists obey the industry's rules and give the industry some profit. The Oscars were fine celebrating Bong Joon-ho's movie because even though they don't profit from the movie's success, at least Bong Joon-ho is not an artist releasing multiple successful projects a year. Parasite was a one-time thing that indirectly could help his other movies from American production companies. The Emmys were happy giving Squid Game's multiple awards because at least the show was being produced by Netflix and the actor 
investors were happy to accept offers from the Western industry. In other words, the Western industry got benefits from the success of a foreign series, so it was fine to celebrate them. Everything Everywhere All at Once was highly celebrated by the industry, but at the end of the day, it's an American movie by American directors, American writers, and American production companies. In the end, the movie's success is the American industry's profit. But singers are different, because they constantly release music and their success can become constant support from fans. So an artist's success can rely on the fans more than it relies on the industry itself. And that is not something the industry wants. This is why a song like Despacito, which was already the most popular song worldwide before the Justin Bieber feature, was not recognized at all by Billboard or any other entity from the American music industry. They only accepted the song as a global success when Justin Bieber and his American label were involved and making a profit out of it. This is why the Billboard Music Awards were happy to invite Psy to their ceremony, but they never gave Gangnam Style the biggest song of the year a number one. Many factors prevented Psy from achieving this. To start, Psy never left his Korean company to fully sign with an American label, so his music never got proper industry support. Also, at the time Billboard didn't count YouTube views as streams, making it obvious how the charts didn't reflect what the public was actually listening to. Even to this day and with many chart adjustments, the Billboard charts are just a reflection of the artists the industry wanted to succeed from the very beginning. Of course, there are exceptions like Gangnam Style, Old Town Road and some organic TikTok hits. But how far they go and how far they'll keep being recognized depends on the artist's willingness to shake hands with industry people. And again, they don't care if you're a foreign artist, as long as they get to make a profit out of you. But if you don't comply with them, you will get your moment of fame and then be completely shut down from the music industry. Here's how they do it. The industry endorses its own artists on streaming platforms like Spotify by applying multiple subtle methods. One way is by putting the artist's desire to succeed at the best spots of curated playlists. The biggest one is the Today's Top Hits playlist, which doesn't actually show Today's Top Hits. That is the ugly, colorless Top 50 playlist. Today's Top Hits is what Spotify wants to be the top hits. Millions of streams from the general public come from this playlist, so being a part of it is it's a vital part of a song's promotion. Spotify says that they decide which artists get to be at the top of the playlist or at the cover based on their intuition and expertise in music trends. But many find these arbitrary decisions suspicious, since Spotify loves giving this special treatment to certain artists from certain labels. To think that artists from certain powerful labels are paying their way to the cover of this playlist may not be a crazy thing to think. Spotify also takes advantage of the automatic autoplay feature. When you stop listening to an album you like, they will immediately play you a song they want you to stream. More recently, Spotify updated their homepage to a TikTok-like feed that lets you scroll down endlessly with songs and music videos being automatically played. So while some artists get millions of streams added because of passive streams from curated playlists and the accidental streams from the autoplay feature, BTS get millions of streams deleted because fandom behavior of willingly listening to a song every day is considered bot behavior. So if you compare BTS's unfiltered streams with their filter streams, you will find out that they are the ones with the highest rate of filter streams. Their streams get deleted more than any other artist. There are even days when their streams are cut in half. But Spotify is not the only platform doing this. Some of BTS's biggest waves of new fans came from YouTube. Their music videos get so many views that BTS started breaking every YouTube record imaginable, time and time again. So every time BTS broke a record, YouTube changed their algorithm to find ways to delete what they say are inorganic views. But it's pretty clear that their algorithms never worked properly. That's why they keep changing it every time BTS gets a new record. So just to talk about the latest YouTube algorithm change, I'm going to talk about the most successful music videos from a Korean act so far this year. According to YouTube, it's this video. But according to the massive wave of new BTS fans you can find on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube itself, it's on the street by J-Hope of BTS featuring J. Cole and Like Crazy by Jimin of BTS. But both of these videos get millions of views deleted 
every day. It's common for YouTube to do this in the first 24 hours with every music video, since it's the day they get the most views. As days pass, fans stop mass streaming and YouTube stops deleting views. But this is BTS, so YouTube is still deleting their music video views today, weeks after they were released. You may still think that YouTube is just deleting fake views, but it's simply impossible for a random Jimin interview to get more views in its first hours than an official and anticipated Jimin music video. It's not crazy to believe that YouTube disproportionately deletes views on BTS's music videos specifically. Let's be logical for a second. These K-pop acts are not bigger than BTS, and that's okay. But it's not okay for BTS to get their views deleted every hour while these other microscopical songs get views added because people are forced to stream their music videos as YouTube ads. On the other hand, because of these two videos, BTS recently received one of its biggest waves of new fans, probably the biggest since 2021. Yet YouTube wants us to believe that these are the real numbers. Numbers. Global Takeover Group, BTS in the studio. There they are. Probably the most fraudulent practice in the music industry is giving radio importance. At least with streaming platforms, there is this sense of autonomy. Streaming platforms may choose the artists they want to be at the top. They may recommend you their songs and music videos time and time again. They may even steal a stream from you because of their autoplay features and paid ads. But at least, there are ways to fight this. Armies may not get BTS ads and recommendations, but they can look for the songs and videos themselves. Armies may not get all of their streams content, but at least the industry recognizes about half of them. But what has no solution except to pay is radio. Radio mysteriously chooses certain songs to get played and stays with those, giving them millions of radio spins and points to music charts that will give them a number one. But here you have Jimin of BTS who has a number one song and millions of radio play requests by fans and still receives zero points from radio. And this is not even a crazy foreign song that the American general public may reject. This is a mainstream yet nicely produced pop song in English. But this is just reality. It was not in the industry's plans or in their best interest to make like crazy popular. So when it happened, they once again pretended like BTS doesn't exist and continue sabotaging their songs. Life Goes On was another radio-friendly song by BTS that got a number one on the Hot 100, but they received a total of six spins on US radio. That's zero points for music charts. Dynamite and Butter were number one songs in English by BTS that were played on the radio to an extent, but the number of spins were not enough to maintain their number one position. They were only able to stay on the top of the charts because people were streaming and buying their songs. That is the main difference with BTS's songs and the industry songs. If you take the millions of radio spins from the majority of the industry's promoted songs, they wouldn't only have bigger falls than BTS, they would simply not be in the chart at all. This is how the industry chooses their success stories from the very beginning. Mass radio play makes a song debut look more successful than what it actually is, and therefore it misleads and attracts the general public. If this doesn't work and the general public still rejects the song, the industry doesn't give up. Mass radio play makes an unsuccessful song stay in the charts with minimal sales and streams from real people. While this happens, songs like Jimin's, which literally got a number one and millions of people streaming and buying, will still not receive any radio spins. Radio doesn't care about how radio-friendly the song is. They don't care about the millions of faithful listeners they will get if they play BTS music. They don't care about the most requested songs. The industry's plans are the industry's plans. Every time you come around, you know I can't say the reason why many talk about the industry as a whole is because all of these music entities are interconnected one way or another. Artists and their labels know that being on the billboard charts gives the illusion that the general public is listening to a song. And to get a number one song on this chart, you need streams, sales, and radio play. So music labels, allegedly, pay for all of these radio play, fraudulent streams, and media play because they can be an investment for future real sales and streams. This can be an investment for real popularity and real listeners. If all of these investment fail to convince the general public and the label is bold enough, they will continue paying for these tactics to stay on the charts while no real people are streaming or buying the song. 
These failed industry promoted songs that no one is listening to will then be nominated for Grammys with the excuse that they care about quality and not popularity. These Grammys will then elevate the artist and the music label's reputation, and then they will get more money invested in them. This money will then be used to buy media play, radio play, streams, and the circle continues. If a massively promoted song or album is successful, the artists may get their investment money back, as well as the obvious Grammys. This will give the artists the most important factor to make money reputation. Allegedly, music labels pay way more money to streaming platforms for promotion than they receive from streams. The money paid for radio spins can go from thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar settlements. And getting this investment back as sales is not as common because buying music is not a popular enough practice amongst the general public. Musicians rarely make profit from their music. They earn money from advances, merchandise, royalties, licensing fees, and concerts. That's why that number one is so important. That's why many would rather not make any profits now and get a Grammy later. It's like being influencers. Their actual content may not make a lot of profit, but the reputation and popularity of their name can get them fashion deals, commercials, and a time slot in a music festival. These are only examples, of course. There are many variables and outcomes. Sometimes artists invest in radio play and end up making a lot more money from sales or concerts. Sometimes an artist has a good relationship with the industry for years and then they stop shaking hands with industry people and they receive zero Grammy nominations for an extremely popular critically acclaimed album. When it comes to BTS, the Western industry's main interest is ratings and social media engagement because that is direct money for the Western industry. BTS's five Grammy nominations are historic for a number of reasons, but their lack of wins show the obvious message the Grammys are trying to send them. You can't be invited so we have the ratings but you are not our friends, so you won't win. In the end, the industry has the first and last say. And this doesn't only happen in the Western music industry. You won't believe how much the South Korean music industry tries to sabotage the only artists capable of bringing billions of dollars to their economy. Again, this is because BTS are not part of their elite. The three major music labels in South Korea control the entertainment industry. They have enough power to blacklist artists from independent labels like BTS and make the media downplay their achievements. There is isn't a common practice of deleting sales like in American music charts, but what they would do is freeze the charts and then apologize for a technical error, so if millions of BTS sales are not counted once again. This is how the different music entities inside each music industry are interconnected. They need one another to function. Sometimes they are one and the same. If you thought Billboard and Rolling Stone were at some point competing for who has the best charts, think about how they are both owned by Banks Media Corporation, which also owns Variety, Deadline, The Hollywood Reporter, and an interest in music business worldwide. So if BTS is still the biggest group in the world, but they don't have a good relationship with the music industry, here you will have, guess who, Billboard, Rolling Stone, Variety, and The Hollywood Reporter making a profit out of BTS by selling exclusive photo shoots while at the same time writing negative articles undermining their success. This person said something interesting. Billboard is nothing but an ad selling business, the literal definition of a billboard. So why are you surprised the artists Billboard promoted since day one end up succeeding in the Billboard charts? Like I said, there are not many artists that make money from their music, but music sales are still an important factor to get a number one song or album, so they will digitally sell their songs for cents and their albums for only a couple of dollars. This makes a lot of points for charts, but not so much money for the artist. They will also do the classic bundle album sales, by selling concert tickets and different kinds of merch like t-shirts, socks, underwear, cups, lollipops, energy drinks, and even concerts, along with a copy of their album. Charts will then count these merch sales as album sales. However, BTS's main strategy to get their number one albums and songs is to focus on music sales, real sales. BTS has never bundled their albums with any kind of merchandise or concert tickets. Their biggest sin, which the industry loves to point out, is the fact that they release a maximum of four versions of an album, but these were only special occasions. The norm for BTS is to release two versions of an album, something completely harmless if you compare it to the insane sales tactics by other music labels. 
fans being encouraged to buy two or four versions of the same album because they come with a unique photo card is nothing compared to K-pop singers releasing 7 or 13 versions of the same album. BTS's two or four versions of an album don't have the purpose to maximize album sales, or they would be way cheaper. BTS's album versions are intended to actually make money, and their number of versions usually has something to do with the album's concept. If they think one version of an album is enough to capture the album's concept, then they will release only one version. If the album's concept works better in two opposite works, then they release two versions. It's as simple as that. Another common practice to maximize sales is to release remixes of a song. All of these remixes, sales, and streams will be combined and help the main song climb in music charts. BTS very occasionally releases multiple remixes of a song, and armies buy these remixes to help BTS stay on the charts, since they receive literally zero points from radio and their streams are cut in half. But while BTS is being criticized by the industry for this remix tactic, other artists are celebrated and called smart and iconic for doing exactly the same. The industry and multiple fandoms think they are doing something by accusing armies of mass buying BTS albums and songs, without realizing that by doing so, they are admitting that the quote-unquote organic hits from the charts are there with industry support and not fandom support. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at BTS for not having radio points, when they have no control over that. They will have to pay for that just like every other artist is doing. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at armies for mass buying, when all they're doing is balance the unfair treatment by the industry. If BTS is not willing to pay for radio, which is illegal, or pay for playlisting in streaming platforms, then armies will buy every copy of BTS music available. BTS depends on their fandom and their fandom only. That's what terrifies the industry. BTS are able to stay on the charts while actually making money from their music. That money goes to the BTS members and their Korean label, while the Western music industry receives nothing. Even the distribution deal BTS has with an American label benefits BTS more than it benefits the American label, so the label prioritizes their actual signed artists and dismisses BTS. That's what makes the industry mad. That's why the industry has ridiculed them so much that fandoms have convinced themselves that BTS are the corrupt ones instead of being the against all odds winners in a corrupt industry. And this is beyond the industry being petty. Other fandoms are convinced that the general public's support is better than fandom support because that is, according to the industry, organic success. But as you can see, there is nothing organic about these tactics. There is nothing organic about an industry choosing its own success stories and sabotaging the ones overcoming their unfair obstacles. What is organic is having a fan base of real people actually buying and streaming the music. You can see these millions of real people in sold out stadium tours, something that the majority of the number one artists and quote unquote million sellers cannot accomplish. The general public may be tricked into streaming a song, they may follow a music trend on TikTok, but they are not always willing to buy expensive concert tickets. The general public moves on and forgets, but an army of fans is able to make an album or song successful without the artist paying for industry support. Real organic success is when an artist transforms the general public into fans, and that's what BTS does with every release. The fandom's numbers only go up. This is clearly reflected in the percentage of fans who consider themselves only ARMY. The majority of BTS fans are not K-pop fans. The majority of BTS fans are part of the general public. And it is easily understandable when you look at the fandom's waves of new fans and realize that they have nothing to do with K-pop and everything to do with BTS's performance. So why would an artist prefer the momentary passive support from the general public when they could have the constant active support from a fandom? Why would artists prefer for a theater or arena concert with people who only know their one or two TikTok hits instead of a sold out stadium with people who know all of their songs. Why is constantly convincing the general public to be your fan not organic success? I know I have to know. 
I think it's very hypocritical for fandoms to cry about how the charts have no meaning anymore every time BTS gets a number one. Yet, they love celebrating the number ones from other artists who got there with weird tactics to say the least. If now anyone can fool the charts and what BTS is doing is so easy, then why aren't more artists getting number ones only with sales? Why are the charts irrelevant only when BTS succeeds in them? And don't get me wrong, the charts are obviously corrupt. The obvious message they try to send every time BTS gets a number one shows how aware they are of their corruption. The obvious humiliation from the industry's actions and media articles show how the industry doesn't care at all about their little mafia getting exposed. They don't care because they know that the general public will keep falling for their tactics. The general public will still believe that a song they don't even like is organically successful because they've listened to it on the radio hundreds of times. The general public will still believe that their accidental monthly stream in Spotify doesn't count much. Fandoms will still believe that what's best for their favorite artists is the industry and the general public support, rather than their own fandom buying the music and concert tickets. But every time ARMY helps BTS succeed in the same music industries that sabotage them, they prove a point. And no matter what the industry does, BTS will make money with no American music label in between and not shaking hands with industry people. No matter what the industry does, BTS will continue having the fandom support others fail to conquer.